Hi guys, I'm Sean of Go Savvy Designs and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping in. Please take a listen. We're gonna talk about five more things you need to have in order to start your embroidery, machine embroidery that is. Um, so let's get right into it. So the first thing that you need is, guess what? Scissors. It's like my all time favorite thing. Gotta have a pair of scissors. You have to have lots of them. Make sure that these are your scissors that you keep in your embroidery space. Do not allow people to come and cut paper with these scissors, protect them. They are very important. We have all different kinds of scissors and we'll get into these different scissors on another live. Um, also, there are things called snips, which are just like scissors. Now these are my favorite. They are by LDH. By the way, I'm not sponsored by anyone and I'm not an affiliate of any of these guys either. But these are just my favorite things. All of these are my opinions. There may be other things that people like, but these, let me tell you, it fits like a little ring here and all you do is snip, snip, snip to get the back of that thread off and to clip things. There's also these really tiny ones that will cut all those jump stitches that are still there. Yep, really, really tiny. See them? I think they're called alligators. And I got these from All Stitch. All right, guys. So, scissors, scissors, and more scissors. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I am a girl about my scissors because I got all kinds. And you will need different kinds because we cut so many different things with all of these scissors. Applique, um, there's also just how you want to trim things up and look at things. All right, so scissors. Number two, fabric. So we use fabric for applique. So you may want to have just a little stash of fabric. If you see something cute and pretty, you never know, you may want to put it inside of, a, of some letters. So you can actually set up letters. Like, you know, everybody was doing these mamas. Well, I, all I could see is me filling it in with some fabric. Like they were just stitching around it and all this, I'm thinking, ooh, that would be pretty with some fabric in there. That's called applique. And so we can make applique with any kind of fabric. So having fabric, that's number two. Number three, design software. So while your machine may come with um, the ability to do things on the screen, like create words, it may come with the ability to even have images in there. But you're definitely going to want to, after a while, do some things on your own. And when you get to that point, that's when you're gonna need some software that may be able to do things like move it a little bit, or you may wanna place things in different play, in different positions on the screen, things like that. You may need software. Um, there's all different types of software. There's So What Pro, there is um, In Brilliance, there is PE11, there is Hatch. So there's tons of them. Now, let me tell you, if you're new to this and you're just starting out, do not go out and break the bank by buying a $900 piece of software if you don't necessarily need to. Most of the vendors will allow you a 30-day free trial. So use the free trial for those applications and then just see which one you like the most. Um, and then once you do that, you can just keep going from there because that design software can be quite expensive and some of it, you can't break it up. Now, I personally use, um, I use Sew Up Pro sometimes, um, but I also use 99% of my time, I use In Brilliance and I have all stages of In Brilliance. But let me tell you, when I first started, I literally just had In Brilliance Essentials and the thumbnailer because you wanna see what your files are. Now, um, for the most part, I'm gonna probably use In Brilliance. So that's my um, software of choice. All right, so number four, you're gonna need a way to transfer your designs from your computer over to the machine. So jump drives are very important. You need to make sure that you have a way to get your designs from your computer over to the machine. 
Now, you have to be careful with the jump drives because you can easily, um, you can easily mess them up. So make sure that as you're downloading things and saving things that you also have a backup because just saving them to that jump drive could be a little detrimental if it's something that you have to keep producing um, often. So make sure you have your jump drive, but also have a backup to the cloud or uh, external hard drive. It's your choice. You can, you can choose whichever one you like, okay? But making sure you have a way to transfer is very important. Okay, so number four, rulers. Wait a minute, I'm on number five, my bad. Yes, so we did scissors, we did fabric, design software, a way to transfer, now rulers. Okay, I don't really use them a lot. I did use them when I first started and I think it is a really good thing. So the reason why we use rulers is to make sure that you're gonna be able to center stuff. Now, a lot of machines, I know for, for a fact, brother machines, they all come with these grids. And so it's just like a ruler. So basically you can point on here where you want your image and you can kind of like lay it on the garment and decide, okay, is this gonna be centered? What is the center? And you can find the center by using this grid if it comes with your machine. Now, I don't know that all machines come with this, but I do know Brother has them in their hoops. So it does come with the Brother machines. Um, there's also these type of rulers. So like if you were doing centering for a toddler, you can understand where the neck is and where the center is so that you have perfect placement. Um, there's also this one. So these came in a pack. I think I got these from Amazon. Um, and so center for an infant, um, center for an adult, see? My line, I think it's right smack dab in the center. And then center for a youth. So rulers are important. Now I will tell you that I do sometimes, um, I use just a regular long ruler. Like literally, I got like rulers. I probably took it outside. But anyway, I have rulers that I would just use. Kids rulers actually. Here's one over here. Like I just grab a ruler. I just grab a ruler and you know, boom, boom, you just measure. So that's all you're doing. You're just measuring it. it. I mean, it could be one of your kids' rulers. It could be a ruler you have in your office, but yeah, just a ruler, that's all you need, okay? Um, so these things are very important for placement, okay? All right, so let's go back over it. You need scissors because you gotta cut stuff. Make sure no one else uses your scissors. They are very, very important. All right, then you have your fabric, just in case you wanna do some applique, make something a little cute, add to it. Then if you want design software, it's important. So yes, consider design software, but don't forget, you can get it for free for 30 days. Most companies will allow you to use them that long. So software. Then you have ways to transfer your information from the computer over to your machine if you're not using some type of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth device. Then the next thing you have is your rulers. Measure it, make sure that it's centered, make sure you're putting it in the right place on the left chest, all of that thing. But wait, you know I always have to give you a bonus because I got bonuses all around, all around. All right, so. Bonus number one, clamps. You will need some little clips, clamps. There, I even have those ones from Dollar Tree. I think these may have come from Dollar Tree too. But there's like those little clamps. When you have, for example, with your um, single needle machine or with the multi needles, you may need to hold something up or pull something out of the way. You need to get a clamp that isn't going to hit your machine. So make sure that it is sized properly so that it doesn't hit your machine, but that you can actually use it to pull things out of the way. So if you were doing a large garment, for instance, and you really need to pull that out of the way, you wanna make sure you have these clips 
so that you can clip it out of the way and that material doesn't have the opportunity to flop over underneath the needle. So be careful with that, all right? And the next thing that you should always have, a trash can, because let me tell you how much thread we cut. Oh my word, there's a lot of thread. So having a little bitty trash can that you can fill up with little pieces of thread versus getting it all over your floor and then it gets all into your, um, what's the thing called? Vacuum cleaner? Such a problem, because somebody gotta clean that. Who's gonna clean all that thread from the bottom of the, oh my God, from the bottom of the vacuum cleaner? Put your thread in the trash, okay? So a little trash can that you can have right next to you to drop in the thread, okay? Um, so that's it. Thanks for joining me. And guess what? I'm gonna have five more things later. So stay tuned. Please mark that notification bell because there will be five more things because I have started a whole series where I'm doing five things for you under 15 minutes. So that way you're only taking a few minutes out of your life to understand five more things about embroidery, okay? So we're gonna take a deeper dive into things like needles and scissors and when you use them, how you use them. I'm probably gonna even do some demos. So you know what, stay tuned. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you guys for joining me. Have a great day. Bye, go sew something. Bye.